Crit and Miss Out of the Abyss is a Dungeons and Dragons actual play livestream and is recommended for mature audiences. It may contain coarse language, adult humour, descriptions of graphic violence, horror themes, supernatural themes, Aussie slang, and more fun stuff. Good evening, Internet, and thank you for joining us for yet another episode of Out of the Abyss. My name is Sven, and I'm joined by Mark, Alicia, Froth, and tonight, say hello to all the viewers, guys. Hey, guys. How we doing? Hello. Hello to all the viewers, guys. I just really <laughs> messed up that intro, but let's just go with it anyway. Who gives a shit? People don't come here for uh, for high quality production value. They come here for your pretty faces, and they're getting that. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, some of the more eagle-eyed viewers tonight may have noticed an absence in the party. But don't worry. No. Grace has simply gone back to her uh, her natural elemental plane of existence for the time being. The summoning ritual is currently being performed in the background. And that should take about an hour or so, maybe less. Who knows? It, so uh, it, it would have taken about half the time, but we, we were short on spell goblins, so we've only got a couple that can do the do the summoning. Diamond dust <laughs> is hard to come by these days, but you should see her. Um, you should see her materialize in a puff of smoke um, very, uh, very soon. So fear not. Don't hit that unsubscribe button just yet, because she's gonna be back. Uh, trust me. I got a question for you guys before we get started with the, uh, sure. the gameplay. A traditional question. Are you, are any I don't... you guys uh, vivid dreamers? When well, yeah, I do sometimes. dream, yeah. yes. Or when yes. I remember them, yes. I'm much on the same page as you there. Yeah. I don't, always, I don't often like remember dreams, but... Rarely, but when I do, yeah, it's super vivid. Got any, any, any fun dreams that you remember? Oh, man. Do, where, <laughs> where do you want me to start? Are we allowed to say that kind of stuff on this channel? Oh, yeah, everything goes. <laughs> this is Twitch. You can say whatever you want. No, no, I've had, like, it, when I have those real vivid dreams, normally it's about, like, fighting or something, actually. Okay. Um, or, like, I'm in kind of, you know, the movie Aliens, like, something like that. And yep. I'm yeah, fighting right. off fucking aliens. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just random. I feel I like that. dreaming is, like... Almost like, you know how in the Matrix, so they go into the Matrix and they upload all this data. I feel like dreaming is like subconsciously preparing yourself for like worst case scenario. So you're dreaming of like mm. aliens attacking you and all that kind of stuff. So that your brain sort of has that fresh in its head. Should the situation uh, like pop up, maybe not necessarily I mean, a xenomorph, but uh, maybe like a, uh, a bogan from Vincent or something like that. Uh, I think that is potentially one of the things that they're, that they're mm. used for. In that regard, like, because I don't often have dreams like that, um, but the ones that I remember the most vividly are like I'll be in like a really cool place, and mm. some of them are occurring like this is one place, and it's like it's this three-story house with two wings in the middle of a sort of like forest swamp thing, um, and the first time I went there, like really beautiful though, like not a not a not a gunky swamp. Um, first time I went there, my grandparents owned it. Um, or were running or looking after or something and it was the ones that used to like run a rotary college and then another time I went back there it was like I now owned it and it was um, a, a place where I used to live in Cairns in a, in a hippie community I'd sort of like called all them people back and we were doing that kind of thing in that house um, and that kind of tied together because some of the um, upstairs floors in the houses in the community that I was in were a bit sketchy and then in the dream some of the upstairs floors were a bit sketchy you know mm -hmm. and then I've been back into that same space several times and every time it's like this what's been happening there has progressed without me being there you know what I mean but I'm still a part of it it's 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 really so it's like almost going into another world like logging into a game or like you know stepping into a, another realm or something and picking up however much time has passed since the last time you logged in as you know the world is persistent and that's kind of cool so you know maybe it's uh also a place we can travel and do cool things that we can't normally do in our actual lives i just can't believe that you would dream about something sketchy in a hippie community there's nothing sketchy in a hippie community it's not what they're known for they're all legit I mean, and above board look 
everything that was going on in ours was legit and above board if you uh, consider moral uh, you know sort of frames of mind um, I don't I never consider necessarily moral frames legal of mind. but you know the law and and morals are two completely different things Ali got yes. any a vivid dreamer um I had one recently which was a bit whack um it was like Wacky the government the knew the date that the world was gonna implode mm -hmm. right and so they were like okay we're Agent. not gonna let the entire human race deal with that trauma so instead we're gonna just like gas everyone okay um so that they all die that way like peacefully rather than this impending doom um and so in the dream like myself and a few of my friends all found out these secret government plans so we built a shelter that was like airtight so that none of this poison gas could get in and saved a bunch of people and uh cool. i remember waking up <laughs> as soon as like in the dream i found out that one of the people we'd rescued had like smashed open one of the parts of the shelter so that we could all die that's I feel like that's bitch. totally got to be blended into like a one shot or something mate that's perfect for it yeah yeah i dig but in like a dnd &D setting you, you run it <laughs> i'll uh i'll play it i have uh roger that yeah i have a uh, i've got a thing for like apocalyptic movies but not mm. apocalyptic movies in which there is a chance that anyone survives um i have this sort yeah. of macabre sort of fascination with uh like proper apocalyptic movies like uh, actually yeah, I, I like I like post-apocalyptic, like humanity struggling mm. to survive after everything's gone fucked. Well, then I feel like that's just semi-apocalyptic. No, I need uh, if I'm going to apocalyptic, it's got to be 100. percent There was a really good Australian movie. That was a, it was a, well, it's a, little, a couple of really good Australian movies. Apocalypse and Armageddon are kind of two different things. Um, but um, now the reason I ask you guys is because um, the other day I um. I woke up my three-year-old, and the first thing he said to me was, "Don't worry, Daddy. There's plenty of grass to eat." And I'm like, "What? What are you? What are you talking about?" And he's like, "You know, because you're a cow." And I was like, "The fuck did you just say to me?" <laughs> like, yeah, I know Daddy's put on a little bit of weight ever since he stopped boxing, but there's no need to uh, no need to get mean about it. We're above that in this household. Yeah, I was just thinking, like, he must have been dreaming about that just before I woke him up, that we were cows and yeah. that, we were, that we were eating grass and that I didn't have enough grass or something like that. I just found that a very, like, I don't know, it was just funny. It was a cute image. <laughs> but let's transition from, uh, from things of cuteness, because I actually don't want to talk about my dreams, because I occasionally have some dreams that are um, so bad that I literally don't talk to anyone about them. And it's, uh, it's a little bit like what this, what this campaign is like. Nightmares beyond comprehension. That's, uh, that's out of the abyss. And that's why I chose this campaign. But without further ado, let's just uh, let's jump straight into it. We'll start playing. When Grace shows up, we'll just take a break. We'll uh, fix it in post, uh, as they say in the, uh, in the media business in Hollywood, which is where I have my holiday house. Uh, and we'll just keep going, but for the time being, let's start with a little oh, bit of... Holly Hollywood, Queensland, right? <laughs> Hollywood, Queensland. That's right. Is there a Hollywood here? Um, no, I don't know. I was just making shit up. Adalia. Adalia's a bit like Hollywood, right? Yeah. Lots of pretentious uh, No shit. When, when I first arrived in Townsville, I was like, oh, so this is, this is what going to LA would be like. <laughs> oh, how wrong I was. <laughs> this is civilization? <laughs> well, I came from Broken Hill, which is like... 20 odd thousand people mining town in the middle of nowhere I've yeah. always wondered how they break a hill um, this is by, what a by, book by, looks by, like by, by, by digging all the silver out of it and lead and zinc and other various things I broke it break piece and then dump lives. and then dumping the, the excess behind the main street literally the, the hill in Broken Hill is, is the old skip dump where they where they used to dump all the you know, leftovers from the, the mining. You say that as if that's not the reasonable answer, but uh, it well. is. <clears throat> um, but I, I digress. 
Let's, yes, uh, we need to play D&D. Let's play a little bit of Dungeon Dragons. Might be a little bit of a shorter episode tonight because we've all got things to do, but let's make it an episode that people are going to remember. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. So, let me set the scene here for you guys uh, while I bring up my audio tracks. That's much too loud. Suspense is killing me. That's, uh, that's all right. We can fix that in post as well. So, we, we, we open up in, in darkness, as we so often do in this campaign. And uh, in a collective dark vision... I, I can see. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, in our collective dark vision, which is, of course, black and white in, uh, in Dungeons & Dragons, we can see the image of what appears to be a hammock. And that hammock is gently swaying from side to side. We can see there's something weighing the hammock down. A figure. You can, you can tell in the darkness that it's uh, it's Plupalpine. And he's lying in the hammock and he's facing towards the hull of the boat as it rocks gently back and forth. You can also hear the sound of sloshing water. This is a pool of water beginning to gather at the apex of this below deck area. And we can hear... Sounds like... What is that? Scratching? Scratching sound? I think I touched on this in the previous episode as well, if you go back. Yeah, I was suspicious of that. And, um... We continue watching for a little while. We can hear the sound of muffled voices from the deck above. The scratching continues. We can see a dark patch. With our dark vision, we can't see what color it is, but we can see a dark patch starting to form. Pat patch is gray blue. In the hammock. We can see He's a dark hammock, version though. of patch. It's like Dark Sonic the Hedgehog. It's patch, but with a submachine gun. It's very edgy. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I've I'm, run out I'm, of ideas. I'm, I'm just starting to rip off Sonic the Hedgehog now. Ah, uh, it's it's all good. So, so you said submachine gun and and red eyes. Yep. That's gonna that's gonna be um Batch, and he's gonna be Patch's Tusk and the Rogue's Light equivalent. Yeah, and there's gonna be a redemption arc. You'll be enemies at the start, and then uh, you yep. guys will uh, will be friends towards the end and, and work together to take down the real bad guy, <laughs> Thrash. <Yeah>. Um. <laughs> But we can see, uh, yeah, we can see this dark patch starting to form in the hammock. And then we can hear the sounds of footsteps on the deck above. Dun, 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 dun. And some people start to make their way down the narrow flight of stairs. And as this is happening, we see Plupalpine. We hear that scratching sound stop. And then Plupalpine turns around and sits up on the hammock as you guys are coming down the stairs. Um, now, if I recall correctly in the previous episode last week, we, um, I think Thrash was the first person down the stairs, but we're just going to retcon that for the sake of, uh, sake of tonight's episode. Someone else is mm -hmm. the first person to come down the stairs. Um, we weren't all going downstairs, were we? I think... It was... Durandalus, Verena, and Thrash. That sounds right. right. So I'll let you guys choose who, who the first person is to, to come walking down the stairs. Well, I'll tell oh, you what. Let's, let's Thrash, roll um, Thrash is still ahead of you guys, but as, as she reaches the bottom of the stairs, she takes a step off to the left, and she just sort of stops. And you, uh, Durandalus, would you say you were going to be the next person down? or? Sure. sure. Well, if you want to, can you see? <laughs> Uh, I have a coin in my pocket. Oh yes, your coin. Let's say I take that out as I'm I'm yes. flipping it in my finger as I walk down. Perfect. You know. Perfect. So, John Velas, you reach the bottom of the stairs and you see the same thing. Oh, no. Thrash, or you see, Bluepipeen. He's just sitting on the hammock and he turns and looks towards you. There's something about the way that he's looking at you that sort of makes you just like 
stop and you've got the coin out so you can see like long shadows forming from like the hull of the boat sort of thing and you can just see Fluplapine at the very back of the boat just at the very edge the very limits of the light cast by this uh, by this coin um, what do you want to do? What do you want to do here? Could, could I sort of like look at this a little bit closer? Hey, I need to know a couple of things here. Because you heard there was water swishing around and some gathering at the front of the boat. Would my, my character wouldn't know that just walking down, right? So as my character walks down, as Drambolos walks down the steps and he steps onto the bottom galley, does he step into like water or anything? Yeah, you do. You step into like you, when she reached the bottom stair, it's like a splash. Like as soon as soon as he takes that step, he would be saying like, "I think we might have a problem." Um, and as he's flicking his coin up, he's sort of having a look out. But you know, how you flick a coin to like heads and tails, and he's kind of doing that. And, but he's, he's looking forward. Can I see like um, any broken part of the ship or anything? Because I do recall we hit something, some stage. Yeah, um, roll a perception check for me. I'm just gonna get you to roll that because your your, your vision's very limited. Yeah, yeah no, we, that's... We, we grazed cool. some of those um, stalagmites as well, didn't we? Mm-hmm. I will, I was gonna say, I'll warn you, my rolls have been terrible. And there we go again. Oh. Uh, what did you get there with that roll? Six. Do I still have? Yes, I have that. Um, Which is fitting because it wouldn't be that light. It's, so, not that much light. it's kind of uh, it's kind of hard to tell. You think maybe you can hear the sound of trickling water, but I mean, you can hear the water sloshing around outside the boat as well. You can't really cool. see anything. You could probably yeah. take a little bit of time to have a look around uh, a little bit better and you'll definitely be able to take stock over a you know, number of minutes and, and find if there is a leak, like, it's going to happen. Uh, but, um, as you dragon. are looking around, you see uh, Plupapine sort of shift his weight and sort of step out of the hammock and he's just standing now at the end of the boat and uh, Thrash is like, I don't know what's going on, but I don't want to have anything to do with this. And she just walks around to the uh, to the top part of the boat, and she just gets in the hammock and just instantly falls asleep. You can hear loud snoring coming from over there. Boom. Um, Am I down there at this point? Uh, yes, you probably would have come down the stairs as well. With my vision, can I see anything? With your dark vision, um, what are you looking for exactly? You're looking, uh, you're looking at blooper things. That's going to be the first thing that you see. Yeah. Yeah. You see, um, he's just standing like right at the back of the boat, and mm-hmm. with your dark vision, you can actually see that the robes that he was wearing before, like the top half, mm. are like in tatters, and you can just see because you see in black and white. For all intents and purposes, think of like one of those CCTV cameras that has that black and white sort of vision. It's like super creepy. You can just mm. see the top half of his torso is just like a black stain, and it's sort of running down his legs. And you, once you reach that bottom stair, you hear splash, and you look down, and you can see the water is dark as well. Okay, I'm going to pull out my sword and just like last time, I'm going to hold it in front of me against his throat or the back of his neck if he's facing the other way. So and Just you, make sure that he's standing still. You're at the stairs, right? And he's... Yeah, I'll move forward. You're, you move forward? Yeah. When you take a step um, forward as you, as you start to approach him, he lifts mm-hmm. something up. And you see it's that scepter that he had before, the one that he had that had the depiction of a woman with crayfish arms. But you can see it looks like it's been broken. Like it's been, like the head has been snapped off of it. And you can see that has been discarded below the hammock where he was sleeping. And you can see it's just like a sharp end now. And he points it out towards you um, as you're approaching. Mm-hmm. I'll get as close as I can. 
he lets you and just, approach. Yeah. And you're now standing like face to face with him and you can actually see now that staff that he's holding is like covered in this same darkness and once you get closer you can see his chest is like covered in like cuts and scarring I'll get you to roll a perception check for me can do Not great. Not great, but it's enough. You're right, like, up there. Your... Mm-hmm. His scepter is sort of... Like, um, binding with your sword as you approach him. And you can see he's sort of shaking. And he's like... She was right. I was wrong. And as you approach, you can see... Yeah, his chest, it seems to be he's carved something into his own chest. All that, mm-hmm. like, darkness was his blood, like, running down and into the water that's gathering in the bottom of the boat. It sort of stained it that colour of red. Mm-hmm. And he's like, he looks at you dead in the eyes and he's like, The Deep Father is here. I need to show my devotion. And now you see he's carved a very crude representation of that same altar that you guys saw of the Deep Father into his own chest. He's in bad shape. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I quickly cast a fairy fire down here to try and light up the whole inside here so that Dranbalas has clear sight and we can properly see Poopa Um, yeah, dude. Um, I'm not sure, like, you're, you're standing face to face with this guy, basically within mm-hmm. striking range. Um, you do have to think about how is he going to react to spells being cast or something like that, so... You don't know if he's oh. in a state, like what, what state of mind he's in, so... I'll lower my sword before casting it. Alright. He... And try and do it, like, as subtly I mean, as possible. Patch has candles. But I'm upstairs. Don't you have, yeah. don't you have the light spell as well? No. Nope. I oh. produce flame. I, I have fire bolts, which I think is even worse than fairy fire yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah, Possibly just, a little yeah. overkill, seeing as we're on a boat. Set him on fire, yeah. it's fine. It'll sort the problem I mean, out. That's what, um, produ- that's what Patch does with his problems. Um, produce flame, I can... Shut up. It's also the same thing I used to do that. Um, <laughs> I can just like hold that in my hand, so it's, it's relatively safe. Hmm. I'm just going to try and, not like stealthily, but like put Calm. my hands up. So that he, yeah, All knows right. this is just... Give me a performance check. Okay. You can see he's unsteady at the moment. Unpredictable. Ooh. That's pretty good. Alright, so you put your sword down, you take a step back, I'll let you describe how it looks when you're casting this spell. Okay. Um, she's going to... As she kind of lowers the sword to her side, she's going to uh, pull out the little uh, one of the little tools from her um, smith's tools, just kind of like flick it in her hand, um, and just like mutter as softly as possible before the light uh, bursts out. It's going to be violet that's like the calmest one I guess um, and everyone within 20 feet no everyone within 10 feet of me has to make a deck save alright 
a deck save. Uh, so that'll be you as well, Drone Balance, I believe. All right. Well, I thought I was looking at the front of the boat. But First roll for the night. Natural back. one. Perfect. Doc got a five. He's sleeping. <laughs> he's nice. sleeping too, so he's uh, yeah. Bark. So what are you a, a deck save. Decks. About what's going on, Bark. Uh, you can still hear that snoring coming from wow. uh, coming from that hammock. <laughs> I think game. I think it's probably about now he'd probably drop another one of those stinkers. <laughs> so, uh, everyone in the area sheds dim light in a ten foot radius. They're having this really tense moment, and it's just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and everyone in a ten foot radius of bark is uh, affected by the stinking cloud spell. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you um. You cast a spell, and these violet, um, harmless flames creep up like everyone's form. Mm -hmm. And it looks like, basically, like like you're on fire, but these violet, um, violet flames, and they don't necessarily, they, or they do shed light in in fifth edition, don't they? They do shed light, so they yeah, do shed a little dim bit of light. light, and um. You can now see him lit up properly, and you can see he's just How covered. Far is the light? Uh, everyone sheds ten foot, but it should be contained to down here. Yeah, I'm just. Um, you can see. I said mine to ten, but it looks more like fifteen or something. <laughs> he's covered from like these fish-like solar plexus all the way like down to like his stomach sort of area he's covered in this thing that he's like scratched into his own body and just blood all the way down and you can see this water mixing with the blood at the bottom of the boat and now with this light drunk ballas i imagine you're having a good look around a little bit you can see there's on your if you're standing there looking towards the back of the boat on your right hand side you can see there's like a gash in the zerkwood boards where you hit the uh the stalagmite and mm. it's not bad you're not in any threat of like sinking at the moment but you can see some water like trickling down from it yeah so uh john Bellas would look at Cross at them all, and he, he would just say, "You keep them in place. One moment, I've got this." And uh, he would cast uh, mending over towards the broken section of the boat, hoping that that will repair the hole. It's going to take you a minute, but yeah, use well. of the spell. All right, so yeah. Um... Dran Balas, you start casting the spell. You you would know it's it's going to take you a little while to cast it. So, um, talk to me a little bit about what casting of mending is going to look like for you. Um, maybe have a look at like the components and all that kind of stuff, and just let me know what that looks like. Yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, as far as trying to fix it magically from Dron Balas's um, perspective. You can see him kind of trying to sort of manipulate things with his mind and his hand at the same time. He's, oh, he's yeah. moving the pieces with his mind, but he's sort of moving his hand as to where he wants it to go. He doesn't actually need to use his hands, but it's, it's the way he, he's thinking through the process. And Dude, sort of he's doing a minority it. report. Yeah, totally. totally <laughs> so like, I, I, I'm uh, picturing him here, like literally, like picking up all of the the splinters of wood yeah. that have cut that have been knocked in and putting them yeah. all back piece by piece by yeah. piece, like very methodically. Can we yeah. officially do cast quicker, but he's got OCD. Dran Balas as Tom Cruise? Yeah, oh, totally. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a that's a that's a that's a good get for us, Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So as far as um components go um, two lodestones apparently or do you have a, a, a spell casting focus or I um... I I do it's my star okay alright well you don't really need so, to worry about that too much then no no I guess he's um, got while he's doing that with his hands he's got his staff sort of on the like 
bottom of it's resting on the floor and the top of it's like just leaning against the crook of his elbow while he kind of does all that you can say you can sort kind of sort of see from the tip of his staff just almost like a faint glow of light between the tip of the staff and his and, and his bruise brain should be mm-hmm. if Tom yeah. Cruise had one but you see yeah, yeah, um, exactly. you see little splinters like um, like Mark just said I'm offending every celebrity out there at the moment and I love it uh, you see these little splinters yeah. like they, they rush through the water and up the side of the boat as you're doing this and you can see one of these Irkwood um, boards as you're casting sort of lifts up on its own volition and presses up against the side of the boat and the splinters fall into their original positions in this in this board as if nothing had happened and it like you see like a bent nail just sort of ride itself and clank staple it back into its original spot and you see the water stop trickling down the side as you're casting that spell oh. but as you're casting because it takes a minute to cast oh. um blue is like we should we should all prove our dedication to the deep father i believe you he looks towards you um verena and you dran Ballas. you you were heralds sent to me by the deep father to show me the error of my ways um yes uh, yes that's exactly what we are here to do who we are and um, he is he is telling me that you need to sit back down and make sure that you don't hurt yourself anymore roll a deception jack for me <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so good i think while that's rolling john balas would be saying D- does anyone have a sleep spell prepared just in case 20. well Ooh. believe it or not you're actually quite uh you're quite persuasive his religious um, fervor is blinding him to the truth you wanted to say something Mark? yeah hey froth yep did you call that out like loud enough first uh, patch patch out on the bow to hear you yeah i was saying it out loud like yeah but like, i'm up i'm upstairs so how loudly like oh, oh pretty loud like yeah. you know when it's you probably hear patch in, call, yeah. call out from upstairs he'd just be like oh yeah yeah I'm, i do and uh, I'll let um, that that deception finalise first. My apologies, Trencher. Mm-hmm. Yes, but Blue Levine starts to drop the sharp edge of the snapped scepter. He's like, yes, yes, you're his heralds. And he falls down to his knees like, tell me, tell me what the Deep Father has told you. How, how can I prove that I am, I am devoted to him? How can I prove that my daughter, my daughter didn't die in vain. I, at that point, I'm going to call out to Patch and go, Hey, hey, Patch, yeah, uh, you might want to come down here. Um, Pluplapine needs something from you uh, about what the Deep Father discussed. And as oh, Patch is okay. walking down the stairs, I'm winking, going, Farina's gonna grab hold of her head as if she's in agony oh and just be like he he tells me that you must guide us to safety oh yes are you getting are you getting words from the deep father again Verena? oh yes he he only really speaks through me i am his his true vessel and he is he is telling me that you must guide us to shore. Guide you. Guide you whence? Well, uh, where? Where do um, we need to go? We we are currently that. taking a detour. But after we take the detour, please guide us to Blingdenstone. Yes, so we can bring the Deep Father's uh, message there. Yes, his light must be shed. His his tentacle appendage. (laughs) 
I want someone to. Uh, we're not live, but I want someone to clip tentacle appendage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on. Make a note of the timestamp, and we can do that in post. <laughs> he stops, and he... You can see his eyes furrow as he's trying to think, like, about Blindenstone. Um, as the DM stalls to find his notes. <laughs> in the meantime, I'm, I'm still there, just slowly reconstructing. It looks like it's from, from where it blew out from the impact. It's all just happening in reverse but slow motion and I mm. sort of look across to you guys and I'm like just just a little bit longer we're nearly there oh I can help you're doing with great that if you like um, oh, if Patch yeah. also cast mending could we do it quicker <laughs> if Verena <laughs> also cast mending can we do it <laughs> just be done I think, I think Verena's <laughs> got her hands full at the moment yeah, no, oh yes it's, it's fine I am I'll... busy yeah, and I, and I was mostly joking. <laughs> like, mostly. I want to use my mending in, in an actual useful mending situation too. It's all yep. good. We can all heal gadget. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, true. Blooper Bean, like he, he, his eyes are furrowed, and he's like, you can see he's like thinking about like, a, a, I don't know, Blinded Stone. Wait, and he reaches into the folds of what remains of his robes, and he pulls out what appears to be like like a piece of like leather parchment like a thick leather parchment and he unrolls it in his hands with his shaking hands he holds it out to you this do you see Blindenstone on this and I'll uh, show that to you we're getting to see a map Woo. there you go um, oh wow I didn't make this map I was going to make this map I, and then I googled it and found that someone else had already made it and I was like yeah look That's I, um, do. I don't care that you didn't make it this is the first time we've ever gotten to see like a map of like the overall area of where the hell we are I know right mm. and um, Verena exciting. I imagine you're the one who's looking at this map you see all these uh, all these names Oh God! And huh. you can't make heads or tails of what's what. All right. Well, look. yeah. In that, uh, um, I will uh, tell I, you. I, 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 I've you been looking a, over your shoulder at this very intently because, like, you know, maps. If you take a second um, to look, you do find Sloobladoc quite clearly on the uh, on the eastern portion of the map, somewhere eastern. near the somewhere near the middle of that. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. And you can see. Um, that section where you guys traveled through um, where the light show was you can sort of see that is where you must have passed through where there's two bits of um, like ground that sort of converge uh, and aren't you we still it. sort of there mm -hmm. yeah so you're, you, you'd be around there somewhere um, at the moment so like um, stoom yeah something like that and <laughs> you see um Pluplapine, he starts to like rock back and forth and he collapses over to one side. Can I can I check his his vitals? Yeah. Dude. Is he alive? Give me a <laughs> give me a medicine check to see see what ah. the situation is looking like. Are you any good at those? Cause like no, kind of my job. Apparently, I, I am. Oh, well done. Oh my god, you're good at everything tonight. <laughs> wow, I need to guilt. borrow some of those rolls. That's amazing. Nat yeah. Natural 20 for a medicine check. I'll tell you, I can tell you everything about what's happening here. Um, yeah, no, he's, uh, he's still alive, but he's lost consciousness just basically from blood loss at this point. Um, yeah. And uh, with that medicine check as well, I'll give you even a little bit more information because with a natural 20, how could you not? Um, <laughs> you can tell he's definitely, definitely suffering from a type of madness of some sort. Um, how you're going to deal with that, I don't mm -hmm. really know. Um, but you definitely felt that when you guys first witnessed the Demogorgon for yourselves, um, you guys struggled even you know, with, with dealing just with seeing that. Now, add to that situation yeah. the fact that... Um, he, he essentially killed his daughter. He now believes that his daughter was right. He's in a 
is in a bad way. So yeah, um, I can't do anything about his mental state, but I do have a healer's kit, so Patch might just like noticing his wounds and stuff. Um, Patch him I up. might, yeah, just step forward, yeah, and just just be like, um, I can't help with the, this stuff, but I can take care of the that stuff. And he pulls out his kit and he's like, I'll get to patching. Kind of, kind of think that maybe this stuff is probably good for now. You know, he currently believes we're who we're not. And so it might be easier to, you know, get him to guide us and decipher this map. I don't like being dishonest, but if we have to. Um, but like, with the map, you know the terrain of the Underdark, right? You said you could navigate us from land. And that yes. map looks like it has plenty of land. Yes, but this map pretty... isn't very detailed. But like shapes of places and, and you know... They you all kind look... of look the same, though. They all kind of have stalactites, stalagmites. It's kind of hard to be like, oh yeah, that's Blingdon Stone. Yeah, but... Think, thinking of like relative distance between potential settlements and things I mean we could probably work together and figure it out like I'm pretty good with maps okay, and you know yeah, I the mean... local area so I think we let him sleep for a bit longer um, oh yes and at the very least like if we, we know where we are in relation to where we just came from we could go to the next nearest place and get more information there if he doesn't, you know. But also, we got this other place to check out because the, 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 I don't know what to call them. They're not stars, but the, the fake stars. Well, well un, yeah, yeah, <coughs> the un, fake stars. Un, yeah, under stars. Yes, Drone so Ballas, your spell sure. is completed okay. at this point. So, so we've got the this thing with the understars, which I think is where we should be should be going. And but, that would give him time to rest. I yeah. think that's quite wise. And and while we're having this conversation, patches, you know, using his healer's kit to just make sure he's not going to bleed out in his sleep. <clears throat> Alrighty. So, what's the uh, what's the plan moving forward? Well, I think whoever needs to. Um, Rest Long there, rest. Hasn't? While yeah. while Thrash is also resting, was going to do that, and then whoever doesn't need to, was going to be above, um, and we're going to track this star thing Ooh. first. It's I would uh, installation. Say, <coughs> oh well, thank gosh for that. I thought that was going to be another episode. We should get this water out of the boat if we can, but I think for now, if. Uh, Perhaps you I take mean, the map up with you and you study it while you keep watch up top. I mean, how much water do you think um, there is there? Is it more than 10 gallons? I have no idea how much a gallon is. I don't know. Um, there's enough water to basically fill a few centimeters of the bottom of the boat. Pardon me. Excuse me. So it's not it's one not like gallon is one gallon. So, so about 37, 38 liters is 10 gallons. Sure, that sounds right. All Two right, gallons. So, like, I could clear it with a spell, but we should probably not spend too much of that energy on mundane things. I think it's okay for now. Like, it's not gonna sink us. The hole's patched. If we get more holes, I can destroy some of the water. Well, seeing as all the hammocks are taken, I would like to lay down somewhere, and preferably that wouldn't be in the water. Ah, I see. I do have okay. standards. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. All right, If thanks. you were able to assist, would be greatly uh, appreciated. No problem. Give, give me a moment. Just checking some things. Alright, so um, Patch is going to just reach into the pouch on his belt. He has a spell casting focus, but he also has a component pouch for flavor. Um, and he's going to rummage around in there for a second and then just take out a little, little vial of salt. 
um, and then pour a, pour a little bit out into his hand and put that back into the pouch and then he's just going to kind of rub it between his fingers like this over his hand um, in sort of like a little circular motion so it's, so it's filling his hand and stuff um, and then throw that over his shoulder as he mumbles a couple of words under his breath and then flicks his hand back out towards the water casting destroy water and I'm going to destroy the water on the bottom of the boat and the water of course um, being constituent component is hydrogen it just explodes because you've it's destroyed it it's not how this works, oh. how this works. Okay. No. <laughs> this is Dungeons and Dragons I'm a DM I say that's how it works the boat explodes you're all dead roll up we're all dead roll up new characters okay I, I'll, I'll, I'll go and get old Rin ready to go miraculously Ploopla Bean survived though um <laughs> no yeah it was a moving water forward. explosion uh you um <laughs> That's a, that's a spell slot so you can get a good night's sleep, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I would, uh, I, yeah, Drambalas looks across the patch and says, that's quite an interesting spell. You must teach me about that one later. Let's, let's discuss sure. after we have a rest. I do appreciate well, your help. I'm going to, I'm going to stay upstairs and, and help navigate, but yeah, you get some rest, buddy. Thank you, Kai. Nice dry sleep. I will now. Marina, are you sleeping too? Or are you staying up? Um, I... I would like to, but if there is an issue, I am probably the best to wake first. Okay. And now I'm, I'm feeling healthy, I'm just a little magically inept at the moment. That's fine. That's why I needed to sleep too. So you go ahead. I'm going to go and keep watch with Jim Jar. Oh wait a minute! Didn't Jim Jar need to sleep? He's pretty. Uh, no, no, he, he slept. slept. No, he, he slept. slept. He, I did. He's, yeah. He's pretty much all right. Yeah. In fact, uh, Bark. Um, um, as you guys are talking, you can hear the snoring stop, and you can see Bark's head pop out from the side of the. Uh, yeah. Of the of the hammock, having absolutely no idea about what just happened, he's like, yeah. "Oh, hey, boy!" And he jumps down from the uh, from the hammock. He doesn't splash into the water because the water exploded in a hydrogen uh, explosion. <laughs> but he, he 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 sort of um, sits down. Um, uh, where wait, 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 sorry. sorry. Hi- hydrogen explosion from using destroy water, right? Yeah, sure. I think I figure out how to kill the demogorgon. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, right. God. It's only stat block. He's immune to all damage types, so that's not going to work. Um, including atomic bombs. He sits so there. We, yeah, we need a banishment spell. Including atomic bombs. He's kind of like Godzilla. Uh, but his tongue lulls. Uh, his tongue lulls out as he sort of sits there and he looks at you with a bit of a renewed vigor, um, sort of in his eyes. Cool. Well, I'll, I'll call him over and um, give him a bit of a pat. He walks and over to you, I... sits down next to you to allow you to uh, scratch behind the ears. Yeah, and then I'll um, reach into his um, bags, which I've, like, I, I did have my bags, like, up near the hammock that I was in. So I think I'll just, um, his would be nearby, say, under the stairs or something. Um, so I'll reach in there, and I'm not going to put them back on him, but I'm going to reach into his bags and pull out some feed for him, give him a, give him a food. As you're rummaging around, you see um, Bark (laughs) start stiff in the air, and then he uh, he he plods over towards back uh, the 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 back of the boat again, and he goes over Mm -hmm. to the um, unconscious form of Fuplapin lying on the ground. He's bandaged uh, or he's getting bandaged bandaged up, uh, I imagine, and he's just like sniffing Fuplapin. Like you probably smell the blood on him. He's like licking him. Sorry, I was just waiting to see how much more you're going to get him get him to do there. That was that was like, well, no one took a joke of that. Now, um, so I think yeah. So Patrick's like, yeah, that's a good boy. He's okay, but he needs some rest. Do you want to stay here and and look after him? Oh. Keep keep an eye on him. Make sure he's okay. Oh. Uh, sits down. Lies down next to Blooper Bean. Yep. Good boy. And then I'll um, head, head on up the stairs. You head upstairs. Jim Jar is there on the on the tiller. The rest of you guys um, bed down. 
for a also, rest. Oh. Yeah, Gadget will stay up top as well, oh. keeping an eye out. I'll, um, I'll come back down the stairs for a second. Oh, Lady Verena, sorry. Um, I yes. Can I, can I can I get that map for now, and I'll, I'll see what sense Jim Char can maybe make of it, and we'll see if we can figure things out. Um, of, of course, yes. Um, just, you know, maybe mark around it when you've worked out some translations. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and make a copy in, in common or something. Okay, yeah, that that should work. Um, okay. I've left I've left gadget in your in your care. Mm -hmm. Please don't let them die. I won't. Um, keep an eye on Bart for me. He's gonna of keep an eye on the plane. Okay, thank you. Um, so you would imagine now, uh, patch a little bit of time. You can probably reasonably expect with enough time maybe to make a serviceable translation of the map mm -hmm. um, but it will take some time uh, what I do yep. want to talk about is while you're asleep Verena what uh, what does gadget like normally do while you're sleeping like what is there a standard operating procedure or um, gadget standing operation procedure operating procedure is just to keep an eye on surroundings to uh, make sure that nothing happens to Verena and the the space around her all right I'll um yeah while you're asleep I'll just allow you to sort of um, flavor text uh, what gadgets doing uh, while this stuff mm -hmm. is happening so yeah you reach the you reach the top deck um, patch uh, and you look around you see gadget on the deck you see Jim jar sort of on the tiller um, and you look around you can just see like pretty much what you see in the artwork there's these massive sort of stalactites and stalactites um, so and sort of still got dotting. the understars going on no that's that's come to an end already like a like a little while ago now. So like, in order to follow those constellations, do we have to go back, or like, what's the what's the go? Like, we're gonna try and track, like, use that use the map to navigate. You, to that spot as well. you, you, you can't really do any more than what you've already done. You've uh, right. you've copied it down now. You would just have to make the best of what you've got and try and um, try and record your progress so that you have some idea of your relation into the into the okay yeah so that gave us a glimpse as, as to that and so i've got my like starting point where we are and now that i've got this other map that i can maybe use that to correlate as well potentially potentially um, yeah all right cool so, yeah. sounds good yeah all right so what do you tell space? tell jim jar anything or should we just uh, yeah yeah i'll um i'll wander back over and i'll just be like oh hey buddy we got a map from Blue Plupine, but it's all in in Blue 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 Blue. Um, but like it's, here, it's inside of him. No, no, it's um. How did you get it out? Room. He gave it to Actually, us. Actually, don't um, tell me. I don't really want to know. <laughs> yeah. Is everything everything all right down there? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're all resting. Right. But um, so so here, take a look. All the all the place names. Or in his language, I'm guessing. But I think between maybe my star map and maybe if you have some knowledge of the, the lay of the land around Lindenstone, and we can see where we're here now, and that's that's Blue Blood uh -huh. uh -huh. Maybe we can use this to help us get to the next place, get some more information, or if you can... If you can recognize anything that might be Blindenstone, we could head that way. But anyway, right. we, we've, we've got a map now, so... Uh, you guys sort of pour over these maps as you're, uh, as you're going along. Um, uh, I'm going to roll a check for Jimja and see if he's able to aid you. So let's give a... Just intelligence or wisdom. Um, wisdom. Well, yeah. I would be survival, right? So wisdom. We'll go with wisdonies. Um, so he got yeah. a natural fifteen. So roll with advantage. Yep. On survival. Yeah, survival will do. All right. What do we got there? Oh, eleven, and that was with a five and a one. All right, eleven. Um, you. 
even like talking to Jim Jar, he, he lets you know that he's never really traveled the Dark Lake, so he doesn't really know necessarily um, the relation between the, the, the different locations, especially on the map, the, in a different language that he doesn't understand. And also, your knowledge of the. Um, of. Oh, oh, oh he's the, he'll tell you, in fact. Like, he's like, um, the. Uh, well, I don't know much about the Kuato. I've never travelled the Dark Lake myself, but what I do know about them is that they're known to be some of the best ferrymen across the Dark Lake. No one, no one knows the Dark Lake like they do. In fact, it's the only reason why the Kuato are allowed to sort of live. Otherwise, they would have been wiped out a long time ago by maybe the drow, maybe the, uh, the Grey Dwarves. They know the waterway so well that everyone relies on their ability to, uh, to travel them. Now, I've never heard yeah. of a map of the Dark Lake before. They don't need them, for the most part, so mm. I'm surprised he had one. Maybe if we head towards, like, the nearest what looks like another town, let's see if we can find some more Kuatoa that might be a little bit more, you know, with it than this guy. The one thing that I do know is that uh, I know the general layout of where, uh, you know, uh, Blingdenstone and, and Gracklestug and Neverlight Grove in relation to where Velkenveld was. So I know that if we keep heading in this general direction, we're going to find ourselves somewhere at some point. But with this map, we might be able to get a bit of a better idea. Now, um, Mark, you while you can't necessarily nail down a direction uh, where you want to go at the moment, but you are making progress on oh. getting that map translated. But um, moving forward, you know, a few more hours pass, and it's sort of uneventful um, for the most part. Um, but you do notice... I, I think if we're sailing and time's passing, yep. I would have moved up to here so I can get it like stand up over the, on the prow. Not not like up, up on it, but stand at sort of, you know, that point at the front so I can keep a good eye out in front. And yeah, Jim right. Jar's got enough dark vision to watch our rear. But it does take quite a bit of time. There's hours passing at this point. Um, so we're just going to go off your passive perception as opposed to like a perception roll. Um, yep. But... What you do notice eventually, and you notice you notice this before you hear or see anything, the boat starts to pick up a little bit of speed. The currents start to pick up a bit. And as you're mm -hmm. traveling along, then you can start to hear the sounds just very faintly of like rushing water. It's the first time you've heard this. What do you want to do? Hey, hey Jim Jar, can, can we slow up? The water's starting to... Uh pull us and it's, it's rushing up ahead I can I can hear it we might have a waterfall yeah sure yeah. mate I'll just I'll pull the handbrake well, well I'll just turn us I don't I, I don't know like I don't know how boats work well we're kind of at the mercy of the of the current here not oh, much I can do okay. might want to try throwing that anchor over just to see if it slows us up a little bit well, I mean, feel free to do that, unless you want to take oh, over the yeah. tiller. No, no, boom, 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 boom. and then I'll toss the anchor over. You toss the anchor over, and I'll, uh, you know what, I'm going to roll a d20 here, get a better idea about what happens. Right. You toss the anchor over, and I'm assuming that you, you want to slow the boat down. Um, after a couple of seconds, you can feel the rope um, like jerking back and forth for a second and then all of a sudden the boat starts to pick up more and more speed but the rope snaps taut tung, and as that happens the boat sort of lists towards one side as the current keeps trying to pull the boat and it pulls it right 180 degrees so that the rear end is now facing the way that the current is uh, sort of trying to drag the boat and the anchor is just sort of holding it there Yep. Okay. Um, well, then head up to the back of the boat and see if I can get a better look at what's going on. I'm going on up ahead like an actual, like I'm yep. having, a, having a good sus now. All right. Uh, give me a perception, Jack. Yep. Perception is. 15. 
15. Good enough. Um, just at the edges of your uh, vision, you can see um, where the uh, river narrows, and because the anchor is taut now, you can tell that while it's narrowing, it's not getting any deeper at the same time, as opposed to when you went through that narrow area earlier. Because it got deeper, it meant that not as much water had to rush through a, a, a yeah, narrower right. spot. So it's just yeah. sort of, it's picking up speed because it's getting narrower and more water has okay. to, more, more leaderage has to pass through that same sort of area. Bernoulli's okay. theorem. Hey. That's called Bernoulli's theorem. Ah, I learned something this evening. Ooh. Excellent. Thanks, guys. I um, learned something too. I probably already have been told that, but it wasn't D&D &D related, so I pushed it out of my yep. head. Forgot all about it. <laughs> um, at this point, um, yeah, so Pat should just be like, oh, okay, it just looks like it, it gets narrower up ahead and, and like, not, um, the water's getting faster. He, so, uh, Jim Jar's like up next to you, he's sort of having a look now as well, and he's like, all right, yeah, okay. Well, we, think I think we've got two options here. That? We can, we, I, we'll, we'll, I mean, we could probably navigate through it. We might be okay. Um, I mean, the only other option that we've got at this point is to see if we can use the oars and try to pull us out of this. Uh, but uh, it could set us back a little bit. We'd have to go right around. Yeah, I, I think we, uh, we try and go through. All right. Shall we wake up the others, or is it just you and me, bud? Just you and me, eh? Mm. Should we make a bet? <laughs> what are we betting on? Okay. Uh, what do you got? Um, not much. Let me see. Picks <laughs> through my pockets for a, for a minute, and then he's like, mm. pulls out a ball of lint. It's like <laughs> candles, bandages, herb gathering things, water, food. Yeah, not nothing really. I could owe you a favor. Oh, could always do with a favor. You take double shift mm. on the next watch. Okay. All right. And if I win, uh, I'll take double shift on the next watch. Okay. So what are we betting on? What's the what's the bet? Hmm. Let me think. That's a good question. Um. I'll bet How you... How long it takes Pat and Verena to kill each other? You're on. <laughs> Shall we do an over-under? I don't know what that means. Well, I'll say, oh, um, two days, and you just say over or under. Oh, over, because I'm going to try and make sure they don't kill each other. Oh no, if we're going to make a bet, you can't be uh, influencing the outcome. Oh... That's called cheating. I need. I didn't make a roll here for myself. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Mm. Okay, better than I thought. Patch is just going to be like, mm. actually, can you roll deception on Jim Jar and tell me if he beats thirteen? Deception, sure thing, buddy. So I think he's trying to con Patch into into something Patch isn't really, you know. Fifteen. That, that you, yeah, you patch like, mm, Okay. Okay, deal. Over. Alright. Got yourself a deal. Alright, how are we gonna do this? Alright, so I'll pull up the anchor and then hmm, I can I can give you a little bit of an edge on your on your steering abilities and things like that. A little bit of a magical magical boost. And then we, we aim for, for in there, and we hold on. Aim for in there and hold on. It's not the first time I've heard that. All right, bring <coughs> up the anchor. I'll get on the tiller. Let's do this. All right, before we do that, and I'm just going to reach out and um, put my hand on his shoulder and just be like, luck be with you, friend, hey. and cast guidance on him. Consent, Patch. Consent. Um, it's, it's Right, it's a spell. I said I was going to cast. It. Actually, no, I don't. I yeah, it's a touch spell. I told him I was going to give him some magical assistance. He said, "Yep, that's." He knows I touch people when I cast spells on them. Well, he feels touched. Um, and later on, 
I'm not going to role play this out with Verena. He's going to show an anatomically correct adult where you touched him. So, um, on the shoulder. I said the shoulder specifically. Yeah, but you know you're a fur bold. Good. Who knows? Yeah, the size of my hands. That was probably his shoulder, half his arm, and half his face, because um, he's tiny. But anyway. All right. So uh, um, you um, and then once I've done that, I'll start. Pulling up the anchor. Pulling up the anchor. As soon as you pull up the anchor, um, Jim Jar pulls hard on the tiller towards the uh, mm -hmm. left, and the boat lists all the way around. And as it gets around, facing the direction of the uh, of the current, he pulls back hard again, and you guys sort of enter into this sort of narrower section. And as you do so, you can see the water picking up speed, and of course, you along with it. Um, and after a while you can sort of see like water spraying up from rocks on either side of this um, passage. Um, as the current gets more and more rough you can feel the boat starting to list towards the left and the right as you're going along and Jimja is like doing his best to hold on to the tiller to keep it from like smashing up against the rocks in like this treacherous current. Um, I'm going to get a a dex check uh, from Jim Jar to be able to control the boat. How are you assisting? Um, so I'll, I uh, guess I'll jump on the tiller with him, following his lead because, like, I don't really know what I'm doing. I just want to add my strength to whatever he's trying to do. So whichever way he goes, I'll go with him. All right. Kind of thing. If he needs to hold it in place, I'll help him hold it. But also, I have cast guidance on him, so he should have an extra D4 as well. Okay, so we get an extra D4. Um, he's yeah. not going to get his proficiency bonus on this because he doesn't have proficiency with water vehicles. But he will be yeah. making a uh, a dex check to see if he with can advantage sort of because I'm helping with advantage because you're helping. Um, yeah. So we'll just go straight uh, straight dex. Um, Go. Let's go. Hopefully, I don't get us all killed. With we'll advantage. So, a natural two. Oh. And a natural 17. Thanks oh. for that. Alright. Plus four. Plus his deck, plus the D4. Uh, plus a D4, yeah. I, I won't worry too much about it, but because uh, he makes it. But. That, uh, he's sort of uh, working together with Jim Jar. Uh, with your um, further dark vision, with your 300 dark vision, you can sort of anticipate um, obstacles yeah. a lot earlier than he can. So you assist him sort of um, navigate the uh, the boat through, but starting to pick up speed. Um, let me roll something here. Alrighty then, um, I'm going to need another check. You're still assisting him with that one? Yep. Alright, so. Um, advantage. No extra D4 this time. Still makes it with the uh, with your I mean, assistant. I, I, I can. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I was going to say if he, if he wasn't going to make it, I could always recast guidance and turn to the answer. I'm going to say it takes an action, right, to cast guidance? Yes. I'm going to say if you want to cast guidance, you can cast guidance or you can assist him with this. Okay, better off, better off assisting than that. Yeah, it's probably better off assisting. Um, yeah. Whereas you did it earlier, um, you did it when before you actually. As we were starting, yep. Um, now we're in the middle of the. Yeah. <clears throat> what's uh, what's gadget doing? Because now the boat's starting to quite violently rock from side to side as they're sort of maneuvering in between these rocks. Ali. Ali. On mute. Good. Ah, sorry, what was that? <laughs> uh, so what's, uh, like, the boat's starting to violently rock from side mm. to side as they're, like, dodging obstacles and rocks and all this kind of stuff? How yes. does Gadget react? Um, Gadget... I think Gadget's just gonna try and hold on as best as possible. Maybe even starting to head towards the little hatch that goes downstairs. Um, so that they can make a quick quick duck under down underneath if it looks like it's gonna get too uh volatile okay all right no problem um everyone downstairs is uh is still soundly sleeping but the boat is starting to rock quite violently from side to side i'm gonna need another check 
from uh, from Jim Joe here with advantage. Alrighty, here we go. Natural two and a natural nine. Unfortunately, um, this time you miss something, um, or you see it coming, uh, but you're just not able to maneuver the boat away in time, and the boat scrapes up against the uh, the walls of the cabin. Boom! Violently hitting the side, and it's going to take. Um, let's have a look here. Uh, eight. you'll do so it's going to take eight points of damage you can hear like splintering as the as the boat hits the side um, and I imagine that probably is going to be enough to wake you guys up who are downstairs if you want to wake up it's up to you should we roll for it yeah um, yeah roll a roll a perception check Rodeo. how deeply do you sleep I've been up for a while. I think Thrash with her insomnia would just be out. Yeah, Thrash is just out. Out. She's out. Yeah. By the way, with Bark having slept for so long, does he um, lose his exhaustion that he had? Yes, his exhaustion is cleared. Yeah. Um, with an 11 and 11, Jesus, you guys rolled the same thing here. Um, <laughs> no. It's less than the... Uh, what was the damage? It was eight points of damage. You got more perception than it did damage. Um, no, I'm going to say that you probably don't notice just yet. Yeah, mm. I'm going to go with that ruling because I'm weird. Okay. Um, another check from Jim Jar. Do you change anything that you're doing? Touch. Yeah, yeah, I'm just thinking. Um, Was that a hint from the DM? <laughs> no, 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 of course not. You do whatever you want to do. I was just, uh, I just wanted to see if this changes your uh, your strategy at all. Thinking, just thinking. Um, I mean, maybe if I spend more attention on, like watching for obstacles that we're having to steer around so I can see them sooner, giving him more time to um, maneuver around. Alright, um, roll a... Well, no, because I wasn't getting you to roll anything before, so basically it's just going to have the, uh, the same effect um, yeah. for all intents and purposes. So you, you make your way up to the uh, up to the front of the boat there, yeah. and you're going to start so calling probably, out. Probably on the way over, I'll glance over the side and see if I can see how bad that damage is. Like, do we have a great big gaping hole in the side, or is it just scraped a little bit? Um, it looks uh, like it's just scraped uh, a little bit for the time being. It doesn't look like you're going to sink, but it has done a little bit of damage here. Yep. Um, right. cool. Let's have a look. Another check. Uh, one of these on, first. Uh, Alright, another check with advantage. Alright. You're good. He manages to make it through the next section without uh, without damaging anything, but it's a close call as he narrowly avoids um, like a big uh, obsidian rock which is jutting out from the middle of this waterway. He definitely pulls the tiller to the side and manages to almost drift past it. Um, uh, no. Alright, another one of these. Another one of these. Doing a few rolls here just to see what, what the situation looks like. Right. I know it's, uh, it's thrilling stuff. Um, so you managed to make your way um, for the most part unaccosted. Um, you can see the end is now in sight, uh, about 300 feet away at the edge of your dark vision, uh, and you call that out to him, and he's distracted for a second. 
and the boat scrapes up against like a rock which was hidden just below the surface of the water and the whole thing sort of lists to the side and you're up the front of the boat so I'm actually going to need a uh, dexterity saving throw from you. At all, I'm really, really good at these. Ten. Ten. All right. Um, ten is enough. You catch yourself before you're knocked overboard. Yay. All right. Um, the end is now in sight. I'm going to need another check from Ginger. There we go. Um, and for the rest of this, um, he sort of makes um, makes good on being able to navigate the rest of these sort of currents. And eventually the water starts to slow down as the passage begins to open back up again a little bit. And the boat starts to come to a close. You do know that the boat has taken a little bit of damage at this point. Whether or yep. not it's... Um, going to be significant damage or not it's going to take a little bit of time to, to think about yeah, yeah. but it slows well, down once, once we're safe um, I might just um, go over to Jim Joe and just be like um, I might go down and check the damage good job buddy we did well oh, oh, right. look my hands are shaking don't make me do that yeah. again okay you uh, you keep an eye out and, and you know see if you can find maybe some land I don't know I'll go and uh, I'll go and check the check the hole. I'm gonna say that a um, couple of those hits was probably enough for you guys to sort of be like knocked, not maybe not awake, but you're sort of aware of what's going on around you. Um, not enough to disturb your long rest if you're still having a long rest, but uh, it was enough. I'm gonna head downstairs and uh, investigate. You know, the damage and see how bad it is and see if a mending spell or two might fix it up or if we've got, you know, we do a bit more than that. Um, yeah, you get downstairs. R roll an investigation check for me. Mm -hmm. I'm equally as good at this. I've got a 14. Um, yeah, 14 should be enough here. Um, you have a look around. You can see, again, there's water, like pouring in from gaps on the side um, but the, the damage is now like more significant than it was earlier and there's some water starting to pull at the bottom of the boat again um, yeah. mending spells probably not going to be enough um, it might help you out but you're probably going to need to do some sort of check and you're probably going to need to do it quickly uh, what, what kind of check um, well I will need a um, a good question, check. Um, I'm gonna say a. Um, what would be good here? What would be good? Survival? Yeah, let's go with survival. It's sort of like a catch all, isn't it? So, what am I doing with this? Like, um, a com maybe a combination of melding and finding what. Uh, mending and finding what um, scraps of wood I can around the place to patch holes and things like that. Which well, uh, have to patch it like that. You tell me. Tell me what you got. Tell me what you're doing, and I'll, uh, I'll let you know. I reckon a combination between using mending for the smaller stuff, um, and then any of the bigger holes that I know that that's just going to take too long. Um, most boats, as far as I know, like you know, like pirate ships and things like that, and like you know, you'd have spare wooden planks and nails and hammers lying around in places so you could patch holes if you happen to to cop something. So I try and find some of that mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. All right. um, and just manually patch the big holes and then for my mending I'd um, just grab like a, a sprig of um, mistletoe out of my component pouch which acts as a spell casting focus for druids and then I kind of like just wrap that in my fingers and then place my other hand against the wood um, and mutter a couple of words and you'd see the, the a greenish glow um, mm -hmm. sorry it'd be a light, light bluish glow because it's um, on the stars druid um, happened in the in the mistletoe and then a similar glow from my hand and then that would sort of spread through the wood and the small patches would just start to regrow okay you know, um, the wood would just grow back together 
in that kind of place. Um, just for the small stuff, and then other ones I'm going to... And while, while that's going on, uh, if you're having a look around, you do actually find some supplies in that um, chest, which is upstairs. Yep. Just some small bits Great. and pieces, like some weird uh like waxy substance and some small planks and all this kind of stuff yeah, cool. and it's enough to you for you to be able to um try and make uh, an attempt at mending this give me that uh, right. survival check i'm coming 24 24 it's pretty goddamn That's good so uh in conjunction with your mending spell and these uh, supplies that you found in that uh chest you're able to patch the damage huh. um and stop the flow of water and all that kind of stuff. And I imagine you destroy the water and whatnot, and it's gone. But well, I'm um, not going to spend another fucking spell slot on it. No, well, that's entirely <laughs> up to you. But what you do <laughs> notice while you're working is that the boat is yeah. sort of, uh, even though it's been repaired, yeah, it's like, it's listing to the side, and everything's sort yeah. of uncomfortable now. It's sort of leaning to the left, and. Um, you hear Jimja call out to you from to you from above. He's he's like, "How's everything going? Is it all right? We're listing here." Yeah. It's uh well we I've patched the holes, but I don't know, actually I'll come back upstairs so I don't wake everyone up. Um, I've patched the holes, but there's still some water down there. Um, uh, th I tell I you what, even with your 24 survival check uh, I'll tell you this you've done the best you can on the outside of the yeah. boat um, yeah. but there's still significant damage on the outside of the boat which is why it's listing uh, over to one oh. side and if you want to repair that you're yeah. probably going to need to need to pull over somewhere okay yeah um, so I, I've done what I can on the inside but we've got to fix the outer hull too um, so we might need to find somewhere to, to shore up see if we can find a you know, beach. Yeah. Seems, you know, like a shoreline where we can where we can make landing and have right. the rest of the boat. Okay, yeah, no worries. Uh, he sort of leans over to the side and he looks down the side. Is everyone still asleep? Yeah. Um. I, actually, I, I should. I see Drambalis is in a couple of inches of water now. Is he still asleep? <laughs> I don't know. Is he? Yeah, I'm. I'm asking. Oh, roll for it. Yeah, sure. Do you want perception again? Um, yeah, perception seems to make the most sense. Got to a con save to stay asleep while you're wet. You're so awake. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, awake. I'm dirty. You were just doing okay. lines. Oh, that's how awake you are. <laughs> <laughs> lines of water. <laughs> um, well, lines of dark like water. Ew. I think uh, as before you went back upstairs, you would have heard, like, noticed something a bit strange, like almost like some flashes in the um, in the background because it was pretty pretty dark down there, and almost these little sort of like sparkles and glows, and you can hear like a crackle. Um, and and you turn around and you look at Drone Bullis, and he's like, <laughs> and as he sort of breathes out, he's, the, the ends of his nostrils just got little, little sparks sparkling around the edge of it, like he's dreaming about magic and shit like that then he's oh, <laughs> what what what's what's going on here now oh gosh no uh, again uh, can't what a, what's a what's a dragon got to do to get some sleep around here i like how he's turned southern um yeah so <laughs> a couple of things you've had enough time here to take a short rest if you want to take a short rest um or you can go back to sleep uh if you can find somewhere more comfortable and try and continue a long rest you could sleep up on the deck it's yeah dry out there i think that's going to be the plan so he'd, he'd walk up to the top deck and probably pop himself up against this tidy little box here and probably grab a little bit of rope to, to use as a pillow and Go back to sleep. Is Verena right. is able to keep sleeping underneath? You're in a hammock, right? So you should be high and dry. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm yeah. thinking. Just yeah. want to double check. <laughs> I think you're okay. Awesome. Flipper Bean's back um, in his hammock as well. Um, his bloodstained gross hammock. Yeah, um, yeah we swap him, swap him over with Bart. Yeah. Oh, hang on. He was in. Yeah, um, Verena, you're currently in the bloodstained gross yeah. hammock. Yeah. Unless you yeah. want to bathe in his blood, you are a drow. 
Not me. I don't mind. I would be in whatever one is available. Okay, roll a constitution saving throw um, to see if you get fish aids. <laughs> is that... Oh. It's a bit dark. I'm oh, sorry. Terrible. <laughs> um, Poor fish. <laughs> what about what about Bark? Is hey, he was he... promiscuous in his younger days, right? Who Bark? Bark. No, Bark um, is sleeper bean. <laughs> yeah, but Bark is promiscuous and is still in his younger days. Um, is Bark so, still down the bottom? Yeah, yeah. He's. I um, Patch told him to or asked him to just chill out and keep an eye on um, sleeper bean. So I've got like this, this image in my head that while everyone else is sleeping. Bark's just like Having his jumping way. around and pacing <laughs> on the water and playing around like oh. <laughs> that's uh, 100% <laughs> yeah that's much 100%. nicer than what I was picturing when uh, when, when Mark said that, that Bark was promiscuous so I thought he was jumping up in the hammocks and just sort of uh, I mean trying to make maybe baby a bark. Li- there may be a little bit of that without the trying to make baby Bark's part like oh. he might um, occasionally jump up into a, into a hammock and just like lick someone and then jump back off and go splashing in the water again <laughs> all right so yeah no drone ballast yeah you see uh bark sort of jumping around in the water he's he's uh tongue lolling about and he's like almost like you know that thing that dogs do when they jump up on two legs and then like splash down their front two legs he's doing mm-hmm. that down there but the whole <laughs> boat sort of uh listing to one side as well and uh patch you see drone ballast coming up the uh the stairs Hey, buddy. Uh, sleeping. I'm gonna try and go back to sleep here next to this crate. Okay. Yeah, you know I'm a blue dragonborn, right? Oh. And it's like lightning. I don't yeah. go well with water. Yeah. I'm gonna Sorry. stay dry and hang out up here. That's all right, guys. I patch, yeah, that's fine. I patch it as best I can, but if I keep casting spells to get rid of the water, we could be in some trouble later. So if you mm. don't mind sleeping up here, we'll be quiet unless there's trouble. Is the boat gonna be okay? Well, yeah, we're gonna find a place to land and uh, and do some proper repairs, but we'll be okay for now. Alright, well, wake me if shit gets scary, alright? Okay. Uh. All right. right Moving forward, um, some a number of hours pass again, um, and uh, say two more hours or something like that before um, patch. You can see there's like a small island um, that sort of because most of it's like sheer vertical walls uh, where you are at the moment, but up ahead you can see there's like a small island, and you call out to, to Jim Jar, and he's like, alright, that's as, as good as played as any, I suppose, and he sort of steers the, uh, the boat over towards this island, um, and as you approach, um, I imagine you throw down the anchor, and when you get close yeah, yeah. enough, you can see this island is made up of mostly, like, um, like dirt as opposed to like sharp stone or something like that and you pull up next to this island um, and the boat comes to a stop just sort of like that um, for Dran Ballas and Verena go ahead took off a, uh, a long rest and then we're just gonna go well I'm just gonna go for a quick break to grab some water and we're back we're back right. with more out of the abyss action, and as promised, and have a grace. the ritual summoning has uh, has completed. Um, the um, sphere of protection uh, against evil was a uh, success, so she has been encapsulated at her computer screen. She can't get out and hurt you, um, but she can play Dungeons and Dragons and Out of the Abyss. So for that, we are eternally grateful. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. I have come for your immortal souls as well as those nat twenties. Um, um, preferably the nat twenties before your I'm immortal. Gonna soul. say you can have one of those things. Yeah. Hey, hey Grace. Yeah. See, see, see the color of mine and Sven's beards. Yeah. Yeah, you know they're a bit red. Oh uh, no. We don't have souls for you to take. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, but Froth and Ali still have souls. Guys, help me I out mean, here. Do they though? Oh, oh don't tell me, Kazoo. 
Like, if Don't they tell me do... Cthulhu got to you before I did. This is mess. We'll, we'll have to find out more of the backstory to answer that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, find also, out more next week you're, on you're, Curtain you're, Mess. <laughs> you're not the o you're not the only one in in the, in the uh, soul collection business around here, so you might have some competition for them. Yeah, look, I'm. There is a pecking order, obviously. You know, Satan, and then the Deep Father, and then Cthulhu. And, you know, it just goes down and down to minor level demons like myself. Like you. Just trying speaking to make a of, living. Speaking of the Deep Father, as far as Poopla Bean's concerned, uh, Verena is the vessel of the Deep Father. Oh yes, we all that. we all are his emissaries. We all and knew Verena, that. And, and and he speaks to Verena. Yeah. I can help out with that to give you a break if you like. No. <laughs> She's enjoying it too much. <laughs> all this talk. The power's um, gone. All, all all the deep father and demons. My cats are like killing each other in the background. I don't know if anyone can hear that. Nope. <laughs> no. um, also, yeah. Grace, Jim, Jim Jar and Patch have made a little bet. Right. I'm not going to give you the details of said <laughs> bet exactly. Right. You'll just have to watch this live. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you might be finding a little less of Patch trying to restrain Thrash over the next couple of days. Interesting. Only because he's See, not allowed to under the terms of the arrangement. A bargain has been made. I like this. I like this arrangement. <laughs> but... I'm not gonna use it against you because obviously I don't know this. But yeah. let's be honest, Verena would have to make Thrash angry enough, and I've already promised you, and we're solid. And yeah. um, look, uh, and yeah, that, that, we... that's that's what Patch is relying on. Yeah, we're yeah. solid. And don't forget, you had something you had to ask me. And look, it's a floof. Oh, look at the floof. Oh my god, it has mittens. It has mittens. <laughs> Has <laughs> mittens. Has mittens. Are you tired of your name. cat loudly banging around at night time? Get mittens. Get it mittens. Um, mittens for your kittens. Not editing that out, by the way. That's staying in. <laughs> All right. What did I miss out on? Um, I'm just catching Grace up. Okay. Um, we continued sleeping, hit some rocks. The boat's now listening to one side. We it's found an island, an island to, uh, yeah, figure out what some, we do about it. Make some emergency repairs. All right, amazing. Let's uh, let's just fucking pick it up from there. Yep. Holy shit, I am coming so going. here. I suppose the first thing to do would be make sure the island is safe. Would be my assumption. All right. That's probably so, I've got to wake up. Have so, I had a long yeah. rest right. yet? Yeah. Well, everyone else has. Um, has has Thrash had a, had enough? She went to sleep first, so probably if everyone else yeah. is all good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, uh, sick. Yeah, you've uh, you've had a long rest now. You're fine. Yay, um, I've I rested. Long. Um, when you step out of the hammock, your paws are going to immediately hit a couple of inches of water. Okay, how close are you guys to the boat? I mean, like, haven't left yet. Okay. I'm still up. So I'm as in. Thrash, obviously she's had a very restful night's sleep compared to normal. She rolled a 17 yeah. out of 20, so she's like pretty well rested. As she rolls out of bed, she doesn't even look. She was just gonna like roll straight out. Um, and she, like her knees hit the floor and you guys just um, hear, what in the holy ever loving fuck have you done to my boat? Well, hold on right there cowboy because i need another <laughs> constitution saving throw from you before we uh why we on. <laughs> why is it because it's water i got another 17 am i okay that's without even add that's without even adding your con modifier <laughs> Oh yeah, proficiency. i should probably add my con that would help um yeah 18 19 21 Plus, uh, do you have proficiency in con saves as a barb or not? Uh, I do. I do, uh, actually. Yeah, add, what does proficiency two. do again? Uh, plus two at this stage, I think. Oh, well, that's three. It's already added to it, isn't it? On D&D no, 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 Beyond, like, don't so, they no, already add? Oh, well, yeah, but you just rolled a d20, not a... Um, yeah, yeah, so plus three unpaid. with my proficiency would make it... Do you only have plus 18, one 19. con mod? Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah. Yeah. And then remember we've discussed this. Yeah, she's. Right, we have remember we've discussed this. She's. Yeah, she's not cannon. funny. Yeah. She, <laughs> I built her to be breakable. Yeah. I built her to because I was planning on rolling lots of frenzy checks. Uh, like to because that's containing her anger that's the way yeah. i see con as well it's not only like physical it's mental yeah All right, so, so i'll tell you what happens here because when you oh, wake great. up <laughs> when you wake up thrash <laughs> you feel um you're hot and cold you're sweating you feel clammy um you have got enough rest you don't feel like it's uh, like it's uh, affected your rest at this point, um, but uh, wait, have, let me have a look at this. Um, I oh no, feel like Sarah would be um, really handy about now. You have one level of exhaustion. Um, you have one level of exhaustion, and you, you didn't need to make a con save on that one. Sorry, that was uh, that was incorrect from me. You've already made the con save, so it's, this is already happening. You have one level of exhaustion. Your sleep wasn't quite as good as you wanted it to be, you because you're suffering from fatigue and cramps. And on top of that, you can feel that your body just isn't uh, as effective um, at um, restoring hit points. <laughs> For all intents and purposes. Oh what? Oh what? <laughs> um, how do I get rid of it? How do I make it stop? Well, I'm just surprised stop. at this point. It's been a while since I've been describing this that no one has done a medicine check on you or has at all shown any type of concern about what's happening. But that's how you feel when you wake up. So you have one level of exhaustion. Okay. Do keep that in mind. Um, and you're feeling... I always have one level of exhaustion. <laughs> really, really it's terrible. It's just normal at this point. Um, well, I was trying to hide it, to be honest. I did yes. roll pretty well to hide it the other night, so that's probably my fault. Um, but anyway, yep, so she'll roll out of bed and say, what the fuck have you done to my boat? Um, and she'll walk upstairs, and I think she'll try a little bit... That's not me metagaming, but you obviously described that she's less effective at restoring hit points, so that's pretty... She's not well. So, I don't think Thrash is going to make any attempt to hide how sick she is now. Like, she'll just let... Like, normally she'd, like, hide the shivers and hide the chills a bit more, but she's going to come up shivering and stuff. She's going to be like, bloody hell, it's cold up here! Thrash, you don't look so good. Just, well, that's just mean. I'm fine. No, I mean, you, you look like you're, you're maybe not well. Do you want me to, do you want me to take a look? Sure. Fine. Okay, come come and sit down over here on this box. Try not try not to wake Dran Bala see was resting. I'll stand, but sure. Okay, and I'll just start I'll get my healers kit out and you know start running some, some tests. Alright. You know, like very 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 official proper tests like here, put this under your tongue and say ah and you know, things like that. Like yeah, a little you get this out. Yeah. Hundred percent. Uh, so rolling medicine. Boom! I know exactly what's wrong with her. I got a 26 off and that 20. Delicious. She's suffering from two diseases. Oh, Jesus. First of all, she's suffering from sewer plague. Um, it's a generic oh, is that term. that back in the rot fence? Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a generic term from um, that, like, covers like a broad category of illnesses but they all have sort of the same thing um you can get it from like stagnant water um sewers that kind of stuff um sometimes it's transmitted by the bite of creatures um rats yeah. RTOs, nice. mosquitoes um uh, there we go mosquitoes or just offense. coming yeah. into contact with um like gross stuff um for all intents and purposes uh maybe an open wound awesome. when you when you touch something um but basically uh mechanically uh she's gonna have to roll a constitution saving throw um every time she long rests uh symptoms include fatiguing and cramps um they suffer one level of exhaustion to start off with um and she's only going to regain half the number normal number of hit points uh from spending hit dice and yep. no hit points from finishing a long rest 
Oofed. And this is going to be um, a save that she needs to make on every long rest. Um, yep. If she succeeds on the uh, saving throw and the exhaustion becomes zero, uh, she is effectively cured from this. Um, mm-hmm. But otherwise, it, she continues to go down the track of exhaustion and those hit points um, just remain the same for all intents and purposes. Um, You also notice with your 20 that she's also suffering from something else, which is probably the reason why she picked up Sewer Plague and not the rest of you, because she's also suffering from something called... uh, Let me have a look. I wrote this down. Insomnia? Uh, Not insomnia. Well, would would Patch know that? Um, With that nat 20, would he find that out? Because she oh, hasn't boy. told anyone that yet. Possibly. And I feel like that's a good enough role. That um, She's also suffering, you find, what looks to be... Um, um, oh, what does it look like? Like an, like an itchy, swollen area, sort of on her thigh as well. It looks like she's been... Like scratching there's a bit of a bit of a fur missing, and you realise that this is a symptom of choleric worm. Now, choleric worm is something that you can pick up uh, from, again, uh, bad water and all that kind of stuff. Um, so let's just say she went swimming um, in some bad water with an open wound, choleric worm. And the only effect from Choleric Worm is um, that she has disadvantage on um, any check to resist poisons or diseases, which is why she's been rolling these things with disadvantage. Um, But... Make me better. One thing that you do know is that she can be successfully cured of Choleric Worm with... A successful medicine skill check that requires a surgical incision. Okay. Fix it. So uh, basically, if you don't cure this, this is yeah. going to last a while, and she will be making yeah. all those con saves every long rest yeah. at disadvantage. Right. And so I will relay all of this information in, like, you know, probably simpler terms, um, just because that's how Patch talks. Um, and then, you know, like, go fishing around in my healer's kit for a scalpel and just be like, so, I can fix that one, and the other one you just gotta rest. If Serethel was still around... Oh. Alright, <laughs> this would be a good time to mention a, thing. a couple of things. Mm. Um, oh, what else is wrong with me? Nothing, nothing necessarily wrong with you, but um, with your natural 20 on that medicine check, I will tell you it requires a DC 15 medicine skill check, um, and it will be a good time to remind you of what happens should you fail it by five or more. So keep that in mind. <laughs> okay, what cards have we got on the table at the moment, the folks? <laughs> so um, in regards to cards, you have an advantage and some health potions. Mm. Okay, so... You also have inspiration yourself. Oh, yeah. And, and I, I have cast... inspiration. All right. And I can cast Not guidance on myself. So um, what do you reckon if I use the advantage cards? Into... Or oh, does anyone not have inspiration? Me. Oh, well, you? All right. So we'll save the card for you. I'll use my own inspiration and I'll, and I'll cast guidance on myself. So I'm rolling an advantage and I get an, an extra d4. So, yeah. Okay. Yep. Sweet. Make that roll right. for me. Medicine check, yes. Medicine check, zony, or med check. Uh, twelve. Oh, I need this D four to be good. Ooh, we get a three. Th- yeah, three to succeed. At least this should keep us out of the realms of um bad things not happening. Nah, so I don't succeed. I got one. thirteen. Unfortunately, but it was it, it was it wasn't a nine. It was or nine or a ten, like it wasn't le- by less than it wasn't by more than five, so I didn't fuck it. No complication. Um, um, you yeah. you can't assist him because you already had advantage on that roll. Now, what I will allow here is a push. You got to tell me what you're doing differently, and I'll allow you to push. But should you fail the push, 
there will be a complication regardless on how of uh, how badly you fail. The other option is wait for a long rest, wait for that um, choleric worm to mature a little bit more, and it might come up towards the skin. Because what you do know with your natural twenty is that the choleric worm, after a while, sort of comes out towards the skin and stays there for a, for a while. Um, so you might have to wait for it to sort of mature a little bit more. Uh, so next long rest, or you can push it now. Um, if he pushes it, can I have permission to attack him? Yeah, man, this is Dungeon Dragons. Do whatever you want. Oh, sick. Okay. You, well, you um, just no. Well, I think actually, you know what? Thrash wouldn't hit Patch. Patch, Patch, is Patch, is, Patch is just gonna look up um, and just be like, um, that didn't work. I could try again, but I could make, I could hurt you. Well, what's the worst that could possibly happen? Um, I hate to tell you, um, the sleep thing, not really an option. Um, so I kind of need this out. Like, so... Okay, okay. I'll, I just, I'll do what yeah. I can. If, if I yeah. mess it up, hopefully I can heal you. At least got that If you mess it up, then we'll talk. Okay. So just what I'm going to do now... Yeah, is, is I'm going to, um, in one hand, um, produce flame. Re-sterilize the, the scalpel thingy I'm using. And then I'm going to go back to my work um, and this time I'm going to be using the flame to keep the scalpel heated um, so it's you know maybe going to make my work a little bit easier and then if I manage to get you know at bits of the worm I'm going to try and all right. All right. All burn right. it out as I get it out um, Dragon Ballas do you want to assist? Um, yes I'd like to also say that in the background he's been working on some magic -y stuff but yes, he'll, he'll, his attention will peak and yeah. walk over and say, do you require some assistance? Well, uh, yes, please. Um, I'm Because I'm working now with um, flame in one hand and scalpel in the other, I probably need another set of hands to help me, like, you know, work through the, all right. work through the wound. So, um, first of all, give me a, a medicine check from Dran Ballas. See if, if you, you have your hand, I'll kick your ass. Can I use my inspiration? Yeah, you can you can use your inspiration, but I'll, t I'll tell you what I'll tell you how this is going to work. So someone has to be doing the check. Someone has to be assisting. Um, the person assisting is going to roll that check first. If it's above a ten, they successfully uh, assist, and then the second person will have advantage on making the actual check. So do keep that in mind. Right. Guidance myself again while I'm doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I've got an extra do. Don't worry about using your inspiration for us. I think it'll be fine. Um, I would either way feel inspired by Mark trying to help Thrash, um, and sorry, help Mark. <laughs> I mean, but, we know what you mean. I, yeah. I, 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 I probably would too if I was there, if I had the skills to patch out, which I don't. Yeah. I would probably I think, just throw um, overboard and call it a day, but anyway. Uh, I, I, I'd be like saying, Yeah, well, no one asked your opinions, then. <laughs> I know. So. There we go. <laughs> um, I would have cast guidance on myself as well. Was that perception? That's uh. Yeah, well, went, you. Uh, you only needed to beat a ten, and you got a ten on the dice. So. Right. Did you roll okay. that with advantage? Yeah. Oh, I used your inspiration. I yeah? did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's good enough. You assist, so you can roll that with advantage. Yeah. Ouch. I'm gonna have my D4 if I need two. So. Lucky I did. Oh, that's better. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I don't even so. need the guidance. You sterilize the blade. Um, I'm going to say uh, you're going to take a D4 of damage here, Thrash. But you sterilize the blade, you dig in deeper, and you actually manage to locate the worm itself. And you get in there. Like, I don't know, in your medicine uh, bag, you probably have like a pair and of tweezers. And you, yeah. uh, you, you, you grab it and you pull it out and it's like this long tape work 
type of thing that like wriggles as you pull it out of the wound and it's like wriggling there and you just throw it overboard and no 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 not no you eat it no 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 like i've still got i've still got a, a palm full of flame Right. And before, that, and that, before, that thing dead. wait, 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 no, before <laughs> Patch goes to burn it, Thrash is like, Dick, can I keep it? Um, okay. I mean, and just like, hands it to her on the end of the tweezers. I didn't, I didn't mean that literally. It was. Okay. <laughs> right, but, um, and yeah, then, thanks, thanks credit. for, um, that. Th That's okay. That. Just, just let me stitch you up and things, and stitch the, stitch the le leg back up, and wrap it with a bandage, and you know, just want to be sure to keep it clean, and and change the bandage every day. That's the choleric yeah. worm dealt with. So you still have the silver yeah. plague, yeah. but you're not going to be rolling those checks with disadvantage at least, which is good for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, Doctor Patch's advice for the silver plague is lots of rest. I was racking uh, my brain no. thinking of what the uh, what the effect yeah. would be if you failed that check um, with the push. It's just like artery, man. Just like yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> or or I could have an attack so with risky. advantage. She got like you you nick a nerve and Crash gets an attack like, with advantage. Yeah. I was um, going to um, have the choleric worm dig deeper into her body oh. and give her the uh, poison condition. I think it was. Jesus. Uh, yeah, I was going to give her the poison <laughs> condition for 24 so hours. So glad I used the inspiration. Yeah, no good. Um, um, so at, just at the end of that conversation, a bit patch will, patch will lean in and just be like, I don't know how you're going to get the rest with your other condition, though. I don't know what you're referring to. I have no idea what you're referring to. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh my god, if, you're so funny. If, if you so ever funny. need help getting to sleep, just let me know. I have some magic. You may do so. Well, I'm... Um, Froth. Continue on. Sorry. Keep going. Oh, that was it. What? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that was it. While, while this is happening, Verena's just going to sit with uh, Pooplapine, like, and just, like, stroke his scaly head and just be like, there, there, darling. It's it's okay. You know, we'll get over this. Uh, Lee Magoogoon is he's watching over you like he's watching over us all just try and take care of him well, make like, sure he's oh not bleeding God. out this is mounted well, these are all dicking she's around still here with that. Um, <laughs> um, Jim Jar makes his way over to the front of the boat and sort of um, hops off the side and uh, he's like yeah this is gonna uh, I'm no nautical expert. This is going to take an hour or two to, to fix, probably. Okay, well, we better get to work, then. Alright. Mm. Um, well, what do we uh, need um, to fix with? Out of game oh, for a second, Mark. Yes. Don't forget, you had something you had to ask me. Oh, yeah, I did, too. Yeah. I almost forgot. I just thought before it, I get it off seems the like boat, you needed it. So. Yeah, before I get off the boat, now that Thrash is awake and while we're just, just talking, um, Thrash is just kind of like, he's going to look off to the side a little bit, um, sort of like down at the ground, and then without making eye contact with Thrash, he's just going to be like, um, do you have any weapons that you don't need? Just something uh -huh. I could put in, in one hand just in case I need to. Um, I mean, isn't that kind of against your whole vibe? Like, no. haven't you got this whole pacifist I don't thing? like hurting things, and I found that sometimes I need to protect my friends, and my spells when I try and use them tend to make things explode. So I thought maybe if I could just, like, maybe bonk something on the head and knock it out, it wouldn't be so bad. Okay. Um, Thrash is going to pull out her dagger. Mm -hmm. And she's going to give it to Patch like, hilt, hilt fast. Um, she's going to be like, I'm going to give you this. But you... I trust you only to use it in defense of others. It's a, it's a because... bit... 
Dabby, have you got anything that I I've got a bat. Bonk? I've got like a bat, if, if that's any better. Like Didn't you say bat. something about a mace? Yeah, yeah, it's a mace. Yeah, it's yeah a bat. that would, that would it's a work. Spiky bat. Spiky yeah, that bat. Would be, okay. That would be good. Um, well, Gumbler overhears this, and he looks over and goes, A bat? I have a bat too. And clicks his fingers, and a magical spark appears, and poof, like magic, the little bat appears and starts flying around and comes and perches <laughs> on his shoulder. A bat! Let's go. Cool. Hey, cool. <laughs> oh, you have inspiration. looks at, um... Give yourself inspiration, <laughs> Rowan. <laughs> Thrash looks at, um, Patch and is like, Jesus, these magic types, I fucking swear sometimes. Um, and she pulls out the, um, the mace. She's, again, hands it hilt first, and she's like, yeah. now that you have a Thank weapon, you. don't mm. forget to name it. You could call it classy, like something classy, like truth seeker, or like soul reaper. You know, you've got to give it a name. It doesn't work so as well if it doesn't he have takes, a name. He takes a look at the maze, gives a look over, and in traditional furbolg nomenclature, you know, I name you Bonk. <laughs> Bonk. Bonk. Right. Um, uh, I was thinking something a little bit more classy than that, but Bonk well, works at, too. This is, bonk, this is, Bonk works. But no, na names are like, so, you know, Bark is Bark because he chews on tree bark. I'm Patch because I like to fix things. And Mace, you're Thrash because, you know, you go wild and thrash the things and kill them. And and I'm, and the Mace is Bonk because it goes Bonk. While this enlightening conversation is happening, John Ballas, you lose... Um, sort of focus. Uh, do you have a source of light while you're out here, by the way? Um, is my bat here now? Yes. Yes, now I have, um, I, I'm using the bat sight for oh. my sight. Alright, that's so awesome. So that'll be, um, yeah. Oh, because you can see through your familiar's eyes, hey. Mm hmm. The bat sort of uh, it lifts up over your shoulders, uh, off your shoulder, and does a little uh, does a little lap around the island. And while it's uh, while it's flying, you notice something strange. Um, I should have moved Jimjar, but Jimjar standing there, he was like appraising the damage done on the side of the boat. And while they're having this conversation, you notice that he's standing like perfectly still. And I don't mean like he's just standing there. He's like. Like his hands are out, like it was mid conversation. He's not moving. Frozen. Just completely frozen. Like he's not that moving at all. Turned into Elsa. All of this, or no, Dran Ballas? You notice that? What do you want to do? Um, uh, Dran Ballas is. Uh, he's got to tell the rest of the party, of course. All right. Um, everyone, there's there seems to be a problem with Jim Jar. Like he's. Frozen or something. Oh, Jim Dog, are you okay, buddy? Does does my bat notice anything? Roll a perception check for me. Okay. Hope this is a good one. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's not good. Um, Nineteen for the viewers that I'm viewing. Let me just check something real quick. Um, do, 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 do. Where are you? Ah, bugger. Here, on the boat. Um, I'm trying to find something that I rolled earlier. Okay. Um, no, it's you uh, don't blind, uh, you... blind sight too, if that helps. Blind sight. Uh, so, no, actually, uh, the, the bat does not pick anything up. But, Patch, you make your way over towards the edge of the boat and you see Jim Jar, as described by Trump Alice, just standing there with his hands sort of outstretched. And as he's sort of standing there, he just foils over backwards and lands in the mud backwards. And as that happens, you can hear this otherworldly screech from the other side of the boat. It's like... Oh, my next initiative check. And we'll see you next week. Oh. <laughs> Every time. I know, right? Loves a good cliffhanger. Uh, mm -hmm. Hurts nice me.